Hello world, welcome to our conversation about Apps for Good, Okta's pre-built integrations powering social impact in the workplace. My name is Adam Rosenzweig. I lead Okta's product impact strategy as a member of the Okta for Good team. I'm honored to be joined today by colleagues from Ring Central and Elastic who are excited to share with you why and how they use Apps for Good to enable their companies to make an impact. In this session, you'll learn how to turbocharge your company's giving spirit by leveraging these pre-built integrations too. All three of us are live in the chat, so please say hello if you have any questions or comments. Before I introduce Tuhan and Christina, I wanna tell you about my first two days working at Okta. To be honest, my first day was pretty boring. Don't get me wrong, I was beyond excited to be starting this job, but I spent day one sitting in a conference room listening to hours of onboarding presentations. Benefits policies, expense policies, insider trading policies, important stuff, but not exactly inspiring. I'd occasionally make eye contact with one of the other new hires in the room and think, I wonder what that person's like. Are we gonna be friends? Will we be working together? I went home at the end of the day feeling a little joyless. Day two was completely different. My instructions were to meet up with other new hires at 8.30 a.m. at a charitable organization in San Francisco called Family House. Family House provides free housing for families who've traveled to UCSF Children's Hospital for critical care. For about three hours that morning, my colleagues and I cleaned up the common spaces, set up breakfast for families staying there, and played with the kids. I found out that one of my fellow new hires was a former FBI agent, and another had grown up in the same neighborhood as I did. And though none of them were on my team, they remained some of my closest friends in the company. That morning at Family House remains one of my most joyful memories in my time here at Okta. Volunteering is a pillar of Okta's culture, but we're not unique in that regard. Around the world, employees in every industry are demanding opportunities to engage with the causes that they care about at work. There's a growing ecosystem of applications rising to meet that demand and we call that ecosystem Apps for Good. You can find these Apps for Good in the Okta Integration Network. This growing list of pre-built integrations includes tools to help you manage volunteering, charitable giving, civic engagement. However your team wants to give back, there's an app for that. The last year has shown us how important it is to invest in our communities. The pandemic has meant that we can't help on-site at Family House or many of the other organizations that have historically relied on volunteers, but many companies, including Okta, have used Apps for Good to create meaningful and safe ways to volunteer, no matter where you are and no matter what resources you have to offer. Since launching Apps for Good two years ago, I'm incredibly proud to say that Okta customers have assigned 1 million users to these applications. That's a million volunteers a million donors, a million engaged employees. Now, I'm excited to talk with two customers about why and how they leverage Apps for Good to create impact in their communities. I've asked each of these speakers to tell you about their companies and their experiences with Apps for Good. After that, we'll have a discussion. To start, it's my privilege to introduce Christina Pais from Elastic. Take it away, Christina. All right. Hi, you all. I'm Christina, and I manage our Elastic Cares program at Elastic, which you can think of as our giving program um, filled of all the goodness all around. And most of you may be saying, what is Elastic? And that is not surprising at all. So I wanted to quickly go through and just let you all know that we are a search company in our simplest form. Uh, we have the building blocks of enterprise search, observability, and security. And we make this all relevant through our Elastic stack. So some of you are developers. I think some of you are just starting out in the goodness program. Um, for you, those of you that are more technical, uh, you might be familiar with our Elastic stack, which includes Beats, Logstash, Elasticsearch, Kibana. Um, and then those are the building blocks for all of our offerings that we have. For all of you that are not in so much in the technical world, if you've ever searched for a ride uh, with either Uber or Lyft, you've used our search function. If you've ever searched for a restaurant, you've used our search function. In fact, if you ever used any one of these things for multiple companies, 
um, you've, you've touched our search in some way. So I can go on and on about Elasticares, but um, I really wanted to get the program in front of you here. So our Elasticares program is a giving program ensuring individuals can give, donate, and volunteer for causes and uh, charities that are most special to them, either locally or globally. And how we do that is really simple. We have the donation matching program where we match up to elasticians donations up to $1,500. We have the volunteering pillar that uh, we match up to, or we give people five days a year uh, or 40 hours of volunteer time uh, to go out and just be agents of change in their community. The last and final program or the pillar of the Elasticares program is our nonprofit program where we give uh, causes 16 gigabytes of Elasticsearch for free for a year. And they can have this offering year after year. There's no end date. So um, Okta has many apps for good and we actually leverage the Benevity app and for um, those of you that don't know Benevity, they are an organization that is a giving tool that can leverage donation matching, they can organize volunteer efforts. Um, and when we first started this program, we were manually getting people into Benevity via email. So if we had new hires start, they would come to us and we would send them an email saying, please sign up for this program in order to get those donation matching dollars, in order to get into the volunteering news and activity, or just any happenings that we had in our program. Um, and it was great, but as Adam said, as a new hire, you're probably inundated with a bunch of systems. You're inundated with a ton of emails, a ton of slacks. Um, so we were losing half of our people through that process. Um, and we, our engagement numbers were pretty low. So it's great having a program, but having a great program is half the battle. We also had to build a system of tools for elasticians to adopt in order to utilize those um, benefits. So it was really simple to implement um, the Benevity Okta tool because we were already using Okta for other programs. And so when we had Benevity, we were really excited to hear that there was an Okta plugin where people can get into their dashboard, get into their Okta dashboard full of mail, the same place where they're getting their calendar, the same place where they're getting GitHub, is the same place where they can get into their goodness program. So we launched Benevity at the end of 2017, really at the end of 2017, it was December. Uh, and so you can see here, when we first started, we had about 32% adoption into the program. This is when we were sending manual emails to people to get into the goodness program. After we implemented the Okta button with Benevity, uh, we saw people getting into the program almost double. Uh, we went up to 61% adoption. And so we, quick, we quickly realized like this is what's this was a scalable solution to something that was not scalable before. Uh, so since then, we've seen a steady increase of elasticians engaging with our tool. Um, and that's led to now in the current year, we have 74% adoption of the tool, which I don't think would have happened um, if we haven't had something systematically to have elasticians go to and be familiar and see their Okta dashboard in order to get into their giving program. Thanks so much, Christina. I'm really looking forward to diving into that in our discussion. Before we get to that, it's my privilege to introduce Tuhan Fan from Ring Central. Awesome. Thank you so much, Adam. Um, and Christina, I love learning about elasticians. Um, Adam, I loved your story about your first or your second day at Okta, actually, I guess. Um, it actually lends me a lot to, it leads me to think about Ring Central and our cause a lot. So um, I'm just gonna keep this high level. Um, you know that we're all here for a live Q&A after. So um, I'm super eager to dive into it and let me know if you um, save your questions because I'd love to discuss further with y'all um, even after our after our discussion. So again, I'm Tuhan. Um, I'm just gonna give you a quick um, video. 
um, about what Ring Central does in terms of all of our CSR programming. Um, I think this gives a really good high level overview of what CSR means to the company. Um, and then you can, and then I'll dive into what that means for the apps, the actual products, the actual software is what, um, how we can empower social good through, um, through the use of our apps. At Ring Central, our cloud communication solutions help organizations work as one. But our company is defined by more than our products, much more. It's also how we conduct ourselves as a business day to day, how we treat our employees, our customers, and the world at large. It's the core beliefs and philosophies that guide us. Through our cause, Ring Central's signature corporate responsibility program, we stand by three value pillars responsible governance and operations environmental sustainability, and positive social impact. Take the environment, for instance. We believe in being good stewards of the earth and do our part to help keep it green. We also believe in giving back to the communities where we live and work, whether it's providing underprivileged youth with access to science and technology education, giving team members time off to volunteer at local nonprofits and community hackathons, or offering a dollar for dollar match on employees' charitable contributions. We also believe in conducting our business honestly and ascribe to a strong code of ethics. It also means nurturing a diverse workplace that's free of discrimination and harassment. One that celebrates every employee's unique background, identity, ethnicity, and perspective. In fact, the Human Rights Campaign recently gave Ring Central a 100% score, naming us as one of the best places to work for LGBTQ workplace equality. Because after all, everyone at Ring Central can work better when we all work as one. Awesome. So thanks for letting uh, entertaining that and, and kind of hearing the overall. Um, that's what Ring Central does in terms of corporate social responsibility. It's taking another step back, what is Ring Central? Uh, we're we're a communications products. We're we're SaaS. We're software as a service, and we. Um, empower people through communications and connections. We know that amazing things happen when people connect, bottom line. Um, that was really the heartbeat of the company and that's where we come from. So everything that we've done has been driven by that that purpose piece. It's like, well, what other amazing things can happen when we connect people? Um, how else can we connect people? Where else do people need to be connected so that amazing things can happen? We ask ourselves this, this series of questions constantly and we do not rest. We are relentless. Um, we're always taking it to another level. We're always taking it to, you know, the nth degree of the the world of possibilities that can happen when simple things like phone calls are made easier, messaging is made easier, voice is made easier, video calls are made easier. Um, we realize that it opens up a whole world. So we, we've not rested. We started um, off as, you know, cloud-based phone, um, essentially. That's 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 where voice over IP is really where it started and it was our bread, our bread and butter. But again, we never stopped. We realized it's not just voice. Some people want um, chat, written message. Um, some people want um, you know really sophisticated inbound, outbound calling, video calling. Um, this is not just this is not new news to us just because of COVID and working from anywhere. This has always been our philosophy. Um, connecting people across the world, connecting people across different barriers, um, and that's when we realized that social impact has everything to do with that. Whether your mission is to be in a business and make money, um, bring you know resources home from your, for your families, um, or whether you're, you're in the business of um, connecting underprivileged people, um, connecting uh, children with their families who have been displaced, connecting um, students with educators when we're not able to because we're in a pandemic. I mean, the, it, the possibilities are really endless. And that's where we've really where we really, really thrive. Um, I am going to get into some of the kind of more boring stuff and the more technical stuff, which is um, that we do have um, a, a series of unified communication tools um, where we allow um, businesses to do better and so for businesses to do good, um, as well as for nonprofits to do their work as well, to empower their work. So engaging donors and supporters, stakeholders in a lot of different ways um, from, again, like I mentioned, our our phone service, services to, to messaging, um, a series of communication there. Um, what we've seen is um, we've been saying this forever. <laughs> we've been saying this. This has been, again, kind of the heartbeat of Ring Central for a long time. And we saw, obviously, the uptick 
just change overnight um, with this pandemic that we find ourselves in. Uh, we didn't think that was a good thing necessarily. We were not happy, obviously, that we're in this you know COVID nineteen situation. But what we did see is, well, we've been we've been priming the world for this forever. You know, we wanted to have. Um, possibilities to manage fundraising events virtually forever. Um, we've been talking about volunteerism remotely forever. Um, so again, that's where we really started to shine. So this is just a snapshot of our contact center. Um, this is kind of back end and it gets a little bit more technical. Um, so I'll let you browse that. But this is just a sample of how we can, you know, you, how we've used our product for that good in that way. Um, after this, um, I think they're going to make, I would be remiss to not say this stuff, so I'm not going to offend your intelligence by actually reading all of these numbers to you, but these numbers really speak for itself, um, just of the wonderful things that Recentral has been able to do in the last year alone, um, just in terms of in-kind donations, um, the volunteer hours, um, the number of organizations that we've been able to touch just through um, our sim really simple product. Um, so uh, without further ado, I'm actually going to just pass it on because I think from there we'll uh, we can we can kind of dive into it. I'm super excited to talk to Christina more about what elasticians and Ring Central folks and and Okta folks can do together. Thanks so much, Tuhan. Really excited to dive into conversation with you and Christina. Christina, I'd actually love to address the first question to you. Talk to us about how you selected Benevity. It was a really rigorous process. We were going through a lot of tools out there and researching and researching and researching over and over again. Um, but we really landed on Benevity because of the functionality. And we really um, loved the company, what they stood for, uh, the flexibility. And what was really great is they were global. And we are a global organization. We're in 40 plus countries. We speak tons of languages, as you can imagine. And Benevity really had the flexibility to reach every single one of our employees. And so uh, I think that's what really sold us on Benevity. Tuhan, what about you? So specifically, we're not with Benevity <laughs> specifically, um, but in terms of the of the the platforms that we've chosen to engage with, um, it actually it's actually come up really naturally. We we listen we listen to our our market, in this case, our employees, for what they want to see when when giving, when volunteering, what's worked for them. Um, we've we've experimented with a lot of different apps, and honestly, um, the most utilized app um, for volunteerizing volunteerism ended up literally being Ring Central's product. Um, our our very sophisticated. Um, just Spring Central video product um, where we can screen share, where we can you know work simultaneously to be able to volunteer together. We we didn't set it up that way. That's just literally what naturally got used the most. Um, so it was it was a testament to ourselves and made ourselves feel good. Um, but we actually continue continued that. So that's our default platform now for volunteering. That's awesome. So um, let's stay with you and let's stay there for a second. What are the most important features for you? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, Let's see, for us, um, being able to have everything in one place has been the most, the, the biggest deal. Um, I, as a user myself, um, you know, we hate having to toggle between like the, the email, your chat system, your phone system, and between that and your phone. Um, on your laptop versus your phone, excuse me. Um, and so we've been able to simultaneously bridge that. Um, that's been the biggest that's been the game changer because um, now every single time or every connection you have with a single person, for example, that you're volunteering with or who you're, you know, you're trying to engage one of your donors or something like that. Um, every email communications, phone conversation, um, video meeting that you're in, um, chat that you're in, all is boiled down to one person, one place. You don't need to be like, ah, let me go find that. I think I it's in an email somewhere, you know, you don't need to say that anymore, uh, which which changed the game for us. Um, and that's made volunteerism, volunteerism and kind of going above and beyond so much easier because you're not, we all have, we all have day jobs, you know, we don't, we, it's hard to, we don't have that extra energy to expel into organizing all of your kind of extracurriculars. For sure. Absolutely. Christina, what about you? What are the features that are most important for you in Benevity, for example? Yeah, I mean, I think like even going back to the apps for good with Benevity, the the feature I think that I can't stress enough is that it's so easy and it's all in one place. And 
people don't have to remember a password to get in and they don't have to click a different link. We don't have to, you know, for us, we, we started with the tool when we were, you know, maybe a thousand or so people. And it was easy for us to send everybody an email and give everybody that really high touch communication and nurturing, you know, all of that great stuff, but it's not scalable. And so it's really amazing that we can just throw this over to everybody and have it at their fingertips. So when they're exploring all these different programs, like they can get into Benevity really quickly and they'll say, okay, because of our onboarding experience, you know, they've had multiple touch points with Benevity. They've heard Benevity, they've heard the tool. Um, and so they're familiar with it. And so now it's just them simply clicking the tile. And so I, there's a lot of, um, I would say connective tissues between IT and us to really like make that process seamless and make the experience easy for people. Because if you can eliminate anything that's in the way, any roadblocks, you're gonna get that engagement that you need or that you wanna see. Yeah, yeah, I'm really glad that you mentioned that. There's People may not often associate the social impact team with IT as sort of natural partners. I think what you're describing is that uh, this is a really powerful partnership if your social impact tools can automatically land on people's dashboards and sort of remove that friction. And Tuhan, like you said, just be there like it's not in some email that I don't have to go looking for it. It's where they find all their other tools. Um, so tell me a little bit about each of your upcoming plans for your programs this year. What are you hoping to do and um, in particular with the tools that you've deployed to your employee base? Christina, maybe we'll start with you. Uh, you know, we have, we have a lot going on. I think COVID has really thrown us for a loop, right? Like I, I mean, this feeds into everything, um, but we really had to reinvent ourselves. We really had to understand volunteering, you know, in a pandemic or the lack of volunteering in a pandemic. You know, what are the guidelines around that? What is, what do people feel comfortable with? Um, and if you're dealing with multiple countries, that varies. So there's a lot of layers on top of that. Um, I think like just the ease of having these tools at people's disposal, you know, we empower every single elastician to go in there and use them. And we train them in these tools to use them and create giving opportunities to create, you know, volunteer opportunities to create uh, just awareness and be an advocate because um, I was just saying this earlier, but like the number one or the number two thing that people that nonprofits ask for is advocacy. And so, you know, how do we do that? Um, how do we holistically approach, you know, this world of giving, whether it's giving time, giving donations, or giving your product away? Um, you know, how do we empower each elastician to have that agency to go out and do that where they are or on a global level? Uh, so that won't happen <laughs> if they can't even get into their tools or like know how to get into the tools or learn about them. And so um, I think like having that access is really key. Thanks. That's awesome. Tuhan, what about you? What are you planning with your apps for good this year? Oh, gosh. Um, I'm really excited for what the future has to, what the future has and hold for us. Um, there are two arenas that I think that we're, that, that we're, that we're plowing forward in and, and really trying to pioneer in. Um, and those two arenas are one, um, diversity, and then two, um, our social, I mean, excuse me, um, environmental sustainability. So on diversity to environmental sustainability, um, what does that have to do with social impact and apps? It kind of has everything to do with it. Um, we've, you know, we've seen, we've seen us, we're, we've pushed the envelope with, you know, remote volunteering and, um, and donations online. Um, the kind of the direction of social impact had already been going that way. And so now we've been, now we're in this space where um, on the diversity front, I'll start with that. Um, we have no excuse for excluding any particular groups. You know, we're currently literally all remote <laughs> um, globally. Um, we've seen it even as a kind of micro case study in our own workplace. You know, we're I've never felt closer to my UK colleagues um, because we I, we talk just as much as um, you know. I happen to be in the Bay Area, California, um, so my Bay Area colleagues, um, and that's really kind of sparked a little bit a little bit of magic in us. Um, that's something that we want to continue to you know, 
we want to practice what we preach and and demonstrate that at Ring Central. But we actually want to see that across the board too, um, with the evolution of tech, uh, with the evolution of all these apps for good. Um, we need to make sure that you know everybody from the, from our various communities is is that has a seat at the table as part of that conversation. Again, we have no excuse anymore. So um, we're doing a lot on the diversity front um, in that space, knowing that that's again, the wave of the future. Um, and then two, from an environmental sustainability standpoint, um, really interesting to see things evolve with uh, with COVID. Before the song that we were singing from Ring Central's perspective is like, hey, instead of commuting and instead of getting on a plane and you know, you know, creating this carbon footprint for yourself, do your meetings um, online virtually effectively. You know, you won't lose that much of the touch. Here's, you know, here's how you can share a screen, share documents, da da da. Um, you know, have breakouts and so on and so forth really effectively. And um, that was our that was the song we sang before, and now it's well, everyone's already doing that. <laughs> so now what? It's 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 a different um, game we need to play in terms of how we can still be really friendly, um, kind to our environment um, in this space, especially as we go and evolve into a, a post-COVID world. Um, I know that's very broad, but those are the two, I would say, pillars that we're really looking at kind of doubling down in. Um, I think, we, you know, they haven't been given enough intention and they're, uh, they're ripe for, ripe for change right now. For sure. So exciting. Um, so you are both, you know, well down the road of your respective strategies and uh, building out of your programs throughout your companies. To close us out here, Tuhan, I'll start with you. I want to ask, what advice would you give to somebody who is at the beginning of their journey? They're just starting to think about how to build their first programs, their first strategy to engage their employees in social impact. That's a lot of pressure, Adam. It's a great question <laughs> to close on. <laughs> Um, for somebody who is just starting out, um, I get, okay, so I get this question a lot of how did I get my job? Um, and I was, I was the first hire in this, it was, it was, it was a made up role as is, I guess every, it's not a role at some point with any company, right? Um, what's I think nuanced and unique about the, the CSR space or the space of do-gooders and people who want to do interesting, um, you know, social impact work within their companies is, um, and and Christine, I'd love to hear your reactions to this too. But I know definitely my my peers in the CSR space would say, eighty to ninety percent of the job is internal lobbying. Um, you're spending a lot of time <laughs> educating folks, um, leaders, uh, peers about the why doing good um, helps the business as well. Nobody's going to sit there and say, um, you know, doing good is bad. That's Hopefully not, right? Um, <laughs> I don't know, um, unless you're from I don't know the dark side or something. But um, absent that, you're um, doing good is a no-brainer in terms of it, it's just good. Um, but the question is always, how do we connect that back to the business? Um, how is it actually good for the business? How can we make this a win-win? How can we find shared value in the good work that you do? So in that internal lobbying, in that trying to find that win-win and trying to find that business case to bring doing good into your workplace. That's that's really the 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 um, algorithm that you need to come up with. That's really the you know secret sauce that you need to find that fits your company um, and your work culture and your workspace um, to get a foot in the door in the space. Whether you are and, and I say that to anybody listening, you know, whether you're a, a developer, an engineer, you work in facilities. It doesn't matter what the subject matter is of your 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 day job, if you will. If you have a passion for this, and you, and if you're able to connect the dots and and influence and and see how doing good within your company can actually be good for the company. Um, and we can talk about everything from, you know, um, employer, um, employee NPS to, um, you know, overall morale to performance. Um, you know, Adams shared that anecdote of, you know, his day two of onboarding, you're really um, motivated and um, inspired that to, to feel connected with a company um, as an employee when you when you're doing good um, metrics like that um, are really simple, easy, kind of low hanging fruit ways to to um, to build that business case uh, to do good. So I would start I would start there. Um, if there are other permeate you know you know salient areas of your business that you can connect with good um, to deliver that d double bottom line. Um, go for it too. It's, there's not one size, there's not a one size fits all. Indeed. Awesome, Tuan. Thanks. Christina, what advice would you share? Yeah, I mean, 
I think everything that Tuhan, I'm going to say ditto to whatever Tuhan said, because I mean, it really hit the nail on the head, but I, I want to like also just express like, you know, Tuhan mentioned the special sauce, right? And I also came to Elastic and there was no program, but I had, um, I had to really understand like why they wanted to do this program. You know, for us, our, our CEO, Shai, really wanted to do this program. He wanted to do it in a very simple way. Um, so we were lucky enough to have that um, agency to do it in-house. But, you know, having that, again, is just like the basis. I think really trying to understand, you know, how people are looking at this organically in your company, you know, where the pockets of good are happening, because pockets of good are happening that you don't know about. And you won't always have complete control over it. Like people are just going to do great. And it's um, kind of a testament to how good your program is set up, right? To have For people to have agency to do that. Um, but really try to understand that special sauce. Like take the organic things in your company that are happening right now and try to figure out how to scale those, how to bring those experiences to not only the person that's doing them and maybe their network, but the company, you know, and, and really blend that into like, we call it the fabric of elastic, right? Like, you know, each one of us play this role, but it's really true. And um, we play that into our, you know, onboarding, which we call X school. Um, we, we play it into every, everything like leadership opportunities. We play it into a bunch of different things. So, um, you know, start with the basics, start with works within your company and really build upon it and and do what makes sense, like not what everybody else is doing. Don't get me wrong, research what everybody else is doing. <laughs> but you have to do what works for yourself. Like you're not gonna force anything within your company. It, uh, you really need to take and leverage what's already there and make it, make it bigger. That's awesome. Christina, I loved what you said earlier today about the fact that having a great program is only half the battle and so much of the rest of this work is building the operations, the processes and finding the tools to help make those great programs safe, scalable and sustainable. And that's what we hope apps for good does for all of our customers. Um, I want to thank both of you, Tuhan Fan from Ring Central and Christina Pais from Elastic for sharing your stories with us today. There are more stories on our blog of companies that are using apps for good to power social impact in their workplaces. To find the right apps for your organization, visit aqua.com slash apps for good. We'll stick around for a few more minutes in the chat. If you have any questions, we'd love to talk with you. Thanks for attending Octane 21.